Hello, everyone. I'm going to speak English with a Brazilian accent, and I hope, uh, I wish I could have much more time to talk about uh, Uri Brofenbrenner. You probably know him very well, but uh, I had a personal uh, relationship with him. He was my mentor during uh, my career. And uh, he's also related to early childhood care and education, but he's much more than that. And I am very proud of uh, being here. I wish to thank you, uh, the organization to invited me, and I'm also very humbled to be, to have the honor to talk about him. As you probably know, he was born in 1917, and he was uh, he was born here in Moscow, and last week uh, it was his uh, centennial. And he moved to the States when he was six years old. He was a, a Jewish uh, professor. You can just go around. Uh, I don't have text in my presentation. Oh, OK. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, he he moved to the States when he was six. His father was a neuropsychiatrist, uh, and uh, but they, as a Jewish guy, a Jewish family, uh, they were starving due to the uh, revolution and all those problems that you know better than I do. And uh, he moved to the States. He studied in Cornell, he studied in Harvard, he worked in Cornell during his whole career. He served to the American uh, Army, and he wrote a lot of uh, books on psychology and child development. One of his books uh, talks about uh, Russian uh, um, culture, and it's called Two Words of Childhood, but it's uh, not really, uh, he was alive and he was changing his mind, and he was uh, all the time uh, criticizing himself. So many times he said to me, uh, I wish I didn't uh, write this book with this title because we have much more than just two words of uh, childhood. And uh, we've been using his uh, ideas in Brazil. My center uh, works mostly with street children, not uh, with uh, early childhood care and education. But we've been using his approach, his theory, and we also created uh, a biological uh, bioecological engagement uh, methodology to, to do our research. This is uh, the uh, cover of one of uh, my books in Brazil, which was uh, published with his ideas, and I was very happy to send this book to him. It's in Portuguese. Uh, and uh, but I I told him uh, any time you see your name in this book, you can uh, be sure that we are mentioning you in a very honored way. And he sent me back a, a message, you know, uh, saying. Thank you. So uh, you probably know this uh, figure. It's in the internet, it's in many books. And this is the uh, representation of his bioecological model. I like this figure more than any other because it's in Portuguese as well. But uh, you can see uh, that the lines are dot. So they are not closed. They are not uh, really, it's permeable, so we can see that uh, protective and risk factors can go and come, so we have to work to really uh, have it very permeable 
and to to protect kids in their uh, uh, microsystem in in their uh, context. If we look to this uh, an, another figure, this is a figure of a street child, and so you can see that the lines are more, you know, uh, they are not dotted and uh, the protective and risk factors are really much more uh, difficult to deal with. So, uh, but if we look at a uh, microsystem, we all have the same. So at the end, the microsystem, the beliefs, the uh, religion, the values of our cultures affect we all in the, the same way. Uh, he proposed his original theoretical model of human development, and I wish I had more time to tell you a lot about how the, the ideas we discussed together, and he used to say that I had always uh, very intriguing questions because I really learn and read a lot of his work. And he was a pioneer in the area of translational and positive psychology in the world. So, as I said before, you should be very proud of having him as a, a Russian uh, psychologist. Um, he, I can uh, say much about uh, his work, and when I got this invitation, I've, I said, Oh my goodness, uh, it's going to be hard to start with a, uh, uh, an idea of everything I learned. And uh, so I, many times I said, okay, I'll do like my students. Uh, I usually tell my students, if you don't know how to uh, write the first sentence, write the second. So that's why I'm talking. Uh, in different things about him. So uh, I actually want to focus on psychology students because as Brofenbrenner, you probably, the students probably have the same questions and the same ideas about uh, psychology. So even having learned throughout uh, his school years that psychology was a science like any other that measure, that observes, that uh, performs experiments. He was always suspicious of it, as any very smart and bright person. He wanted more. He wanted uh, to study human beings, and he couldn't accept uh, the reduction of such a complex psychological reality. He used to look at the books, the scholarly books, and see all those chapters separating uh, psychology in fields. And he always found it very fragmental. So he uh, wished to have a more uh, whole, a vision of the whole uh, human being. So he was fascinated by the knowledge. He was not feared that someone of them uh, would not probably and experimentally test. And um, he actually uh, found that the psychology chapters many times are, were far away from the human being. So he took a challenge of creating a new theory of psychology, and uh, he, uh, as a science, it was a very innov innovative uh, attitude. And he emphasized that the natural experiments the, in the natural environment would be much better to give us more data about uh, the, the context, the reality, the development of uh, human beings. So science, uh, after all, as he emphasized, was not to verify hypotheses, but to discover new ones by providing 
uh, by proving ourselves that we are wrong. So we can learn, do science, and um, prove that we, we have a lot to learn. So only a few scholars in psychology could give such a defiance. Only a few scholars would also have the sensibility and commitment to perceive that many human beings live in conditions that do not correspond to their status as a human being or that at the very least subjugate their humanity in the greatest sense possible that they should experience. So I'm cutting. So, uh, for Brofenbrenner, the words of human beings were not just the ones he himself had lived in uh, here in, in the States. Uh, his legacy is immortal and, and an example of how even living through so many battles, so many challenges, someone can be happy and look around with hope and confidence in a better world. Brofren Brenner had the conviction that the world was immersed and filled with opportunities and that human beings could be in it to improve their own lives and those with them in that journey. He had a very strong influence on uh, the Head Start program in the States. You probably know about this. So he always uh, said that if you are doing research, you have to make sense of it. You have to apply your findings. You have to use that to better the life of the quality of life of people. So, and he also had some uh, very strong points in his work. Uh, he used to say first that he always, he always required a good theory to understand and to study human development. So he was not just saying that his theory was the best, he was very open. If you look at his books, you can see his citing from, I would say, Freud to Piaget. You know, it's very uh, open-minded. Second, he would say that uh, this theory that we have to, to have to understand human development should be implicated and apply to politics and strategies for improving the life quality of human beings. His last book is called Making Human Beings Human. So I guess this uh, title gives a lot of, uh, give us the idea of his, uh, idea, his mind. Uh, and he, also used to say that we have to disseminate knowledge that as researchers and uh, practitioners, we have to always communicate our findings to various audiences through articles, lectures, debates, conferences. So we are here doing what uh, he really uh, preached for. So, uh, and he emphasized the use of naturalistic methods. Uh, so observing real people in the real life, not doing a strange psychology with strange people in strange places. So he uh, really emphasized the, the context of uh, uh, the, the science of psychology. Well, uh, the preservation of the good species, uh, species of our dear uncle Bronfi, that's the way we call him in my lab, uncle B B Bronfi, and he knew that. Um, we've been spreading the, his uh, ideas in different universities and research team especially in the Latin America context. 
And we understand that being human is even a non or a predicate, is a rich expression and it's very difficult to define. He had a very long life, he le lived for 85 years and had the ability to look within and try to understand himself. This was his reason for seeking uh, the study of psychology. It doesn't seem very original, actually, but it seems uh, trivial and common, uh, as it has been repeated many times to us, all of us students of psychology. So Brofenbrenner's humanity is what fascinates us throughout his history and work. And having finished this talk, perhaps I only have to look through the window and say things. And I really wish to come back to Moscow and see you guys giving a, an award or a medal in his name in the future. Thank you so much. Спасибо.